Ezra Shear show. What happened to it? It was gone for two months. What happened? What happened? That's what people are asking. I was getting so many DMs. Where did the Ezra Shear show go? What happened to it? Where did it go? Is it never coming back? It's back, guys. Took a long break. July 13th was the last time I saw you guys. But we're back. Because, well, I was in Israel for like a long time. So that happened. Um, and I was, I've been back for like two weeks, but I've just been busy. I haven't made a show yet, but we're making one right now. It's going to be so great. Just I can't wait to talk to you guys about so many things. I'm going to give you guys a recap of the Israel trip. I'm going to talk about the Detroit Lions. Talk about all the news that's happened since the last time we saw each other. And that's going to be great. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Israel trip. How did it go? How was it? What happened? Well, it was great. Israel, of course, is awesome. I've been there before, if you guys didn't know. Um, so I kind of, there's like not much to like be like, oh, I was really surprised about this. But of course, these Israeli people, amazing people, very welcoming everywhere you go. They're awesome. Um, super cool culture, super cool everything. Like, just awesome. Um, super cool to be there. I can't wait to get back. Um, the other part of it is I went to the Israeli championships in Cubing. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw that because I posted a video on my YouTube channel. Um, one, Pyraminx, so that was cool. And I got second in 3x3, three three, which is also really cool. I wasn't supposed to get second, but so real quick, what happened was um, we had to do like a green room since they were doing head-to-head finals. And since I was like a foreigner, they let me go first, which is such an advantage. If they wanted to give the foreigner the disadvantage, they would go last. But they gave me, I guess because like they, they wanted the Israelis to go be going to head-to-head. Head to head, and since I made the finals, they just put me first because they wanted most of the Israelis, like the best Israelis to be going head-to-head. They don't want me to go be going against like the second best Israeli or what, you know, whatever. Um, anyways, I got to go first, which means that when you sit in there, a lot of people watching this have never been in a head to head final, but you can understand that like, if you're sitting in that room for hours, right? Like not hours, but like an hour and a half to like, just do your solves. It just, the nerves are going to slowly and slowly build up. So by the time you get out there, your hands are just shaking. Like everything sucks. Cause you've just been like sitting in this room. You don't get your phone. They take away your phone. Just all you have is a cube and a timer. That's pretty much all you're allowed to have. I mean, you can have other things, but like. You can't have a phone or a computer. You can't have access to the internet at all. Um, and you hear the cheering going on in the, in the room next to you because they're doing the solves in the room next to you. But I got to go first, which means none of those nerves like built up for me at all. So that was amazing. Um, and I had I got a PR 3x3 average, which is pretty awesome because, well, actually, the entire time I was in Israel, I had been like sort of just twisting a 3x3 in my hand, but I hadn't been like really doing solves with like, a timer or anything. Um, but I guess just like the, just the, you know, just like spamming T-perms or whatever, like it just helped me like, I guess, practice without really having to practice. So that was cool. Um, Pyraminx, I hadn't practiced, literally hadn't turned to Pyraminx for like a month. Um, but anyways, I did pretty good in Pyraminx anyways. I got like, I think all sub-2 averages. No, my finals average wasn't sub-2. It was really close though, I think. If I'm remembering correctly. Um, but I got like a 1-6 average in the first round and like 1-8 or 1-9 in the second round. So it was really good for Pyraminx considering I hadn't practiced at all. And I, I'm just happy about basically the entire competition. I got first place in Pyraminx. Real quick about Pyraminx Finals. Um, okay, so Pyraminx Finals happened. I only went for the last two days. So Pyraminx Finals, it happened on the last day of the competition, but on my, it only happened on my second day. Um, and I had, like, really not been, like, focused at all. The first, um, like, just, like, on anything. Like, I couldn't really, like, basically, I, I had been, like, in Israel for a really long time. I, like, it was just, like, you know, when you're in, like, another country and you don't have any of your stuff, I had lost all my toiletries, like, halfway through my trip in Israel. So, like, I didn't have, like, <laughs> I really didn't have, like, the best toiletries. I was using, like, the ones in the hotel. I had a toothbrush and toothpaste, obviously. But, like, I had deodorant, and that was about it. Like, I was using, like, hotel stuff. Like, I, it was just, like, it was a disaster. Like, none of my clothes were clean. I was just, like, <laughs> I needed to get home, but basically. So, I just, I couldn't focus on anything, really, at the competition. Um, other than just, like, you know, getting through it. Anyways competition i do pure minx final and i really didn't think it was gonna go well because it was my second like big pure minx final like big in terms of like it, if i win it's like a championship win you know um and so like the first solve versus two go really badly like i think the first solve was a three and i was like oh here we go again i've been through this before like it just i'm not gonna get first place whatever lose to israeli you know they can have it it's their championship whatever I'm just a guest here Anyways, actually, it goes pretty freaking well. I kind of lock in on the last resolves and get like two, like a one five and then a one six. So I may have got even gotten a one four. Um, I forgot, 
But anyways, I won, which is pretty awesome. I didn't get a sub two average because again, like my first solve was pretty bad. My first two, but um, yeah, I, I think the last solve actually had a chance to not win. Like if I got worst possible average, I think I would have lost. But anyways, that's how it went. So, <laughs> anyways, um, so that was Israel. I, I don't know if there's anything else I want to talk about. Israel is just pretty awesome. Like, there's a reason I went there and stuff. Like nationals, like it was pretty just like cool, fun times, you know. I mean, I did miss NAC, guys. I'm sorry. I I wanted to be there. I wanted to be there. I'm sorry. I'll be at Worlds. I'll be at Worlds. Um, but, you know, whatever. <sighs> All right. Last show we did July 13th. This is another thing I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Last show we did was July 13th. You know what else happened July 13th? Donald Trump got shot. So that show was sort of like we talked about that a lot. And I feel like it's... This show deserves a recap about what's happened in the news since then. So, of course, a few days into my Israel trip, Joe Biden drops out of the presidential race. Huge news because I don't know if it's really ever happened before where you'd like drop out like a few months before. Um, I remember I was I was like chilling outside. We were in the north of Israel. Um, where were we? No, we weren't in the north. We were in like um, we were actually staying in, in the West Bank. Um, I forgot what it was called. I think it was it was um. Kfar Etzion, Kfar Etzion. I, don't, I mean, you guys are, you guys don't care, but whatever. It was called Kfar Etzion. Um, we were staying there. And I was like chilling outside, and then this, like, I, I guess my phone was, I didn't have my phone on me or something, but um, another kid was like, "Dude, look at this," <laughs> and he shows me. And I'm like, "Oh wow, holy shit!" But like, the thing was, a lot of people around me didn't really care. Like, no one really cared about politics a lot. So it was sort of like a thing that's like, "Oh, this happened," but like, and everyone was like sort of surprised, but like, it wasn't like a huge thing. Like, no one was really talking about it. But I was, like, in my brain, I was, like, holy, holy, like, what? Like, I, I did not really, I really didn't accept that. I think I mentioned in the show, like, on July 13th, like, I didn't think Biden would drop out because even though he was, like, Trump was, like, too far ahead in the bulls and the debate went, was a total disaster for Biden, I thought he wouldn't drop out because, like, he was just too far in it. He, like, he'd repeated a million times he wasn't dropping out. And, like, I, th- I just thought everyone was overreacting, but I guess not because, you know, he stayed in. Um... Anyways, okay. Other than that, there's a debate on Tuesday, and I was watching some videos today from like CNN or like whatever these like news organizations are, and it was like the polls were something like zero point six margin in the swing states for Kamala, and I was just like, wow, like <laughs> that's really nothing. Um, and I think like debates, like I guess so far what's happened and what I've realized is like, okay, Donald Trump gets shot, but his polls don't go up that much. Kamala, what was that? What was the thing that, um, Kamala did something and like her polls didn't go. Oh, Kamala had like a really good DNC, right? Like everyone like thought her DNC was really, like really amazing and her polls didn't go up that much. Like it was like a little bit, but like not that much. Both, both sides, they went up a little bit, but not that much. Um, and then now I think the debate, since we saw the last debate actually did change the polls, I think this is like the last opportunity to change the polls for either side. Um, so I'm kind of pumped, to be honest. I'm excited for it. Um, I think Trump probably has... He, okay, I'll put it like this. He has the opportunity to win. Like, he could really, like... I think he's, he has a whole lot of easier time um, winning because, well, the, the rules are sort of in his favor. So, like, the mics are muted, which obviously last time, if you watched the debate, it helped him because if he had a, another debate where he was, like, interrupting the other person it wouldn't go well for him because he would just look like a dickhead. But when he does it, like, when the mics are muted, he can, like, sort of, like, the dickheadness is, like, it can't come out. <laughs> like, he can try all he want, but he still can't interrupt. So I think he could still, like, you know, there's a chance he still, like, becomes a dickhead even just when he's speaking, not when he's interrupting because he can't do that anymore. But I think I think he really understands because, like, okay, 2016, he was a dickhead, and that – let him win so he thought in 2020 he could just be a dickhead again and he would win but then he realized like when he lost the election oh i can't be a dickhead anymore because it's not working so i think this time what we saw in the last debate was like he's like rolling back the dickheadness and then this time like if the same thing happens i think it's it's a chance he wins on the flip side i think kamala has the higher like destroy like just completely and utterly destroy the other candidate and the polls just jump for her in the debate. I don't think Trump could really do that. I think Kamala, if she has a really good debate, like 
She has like some good one liners or something like that. I think she could really blow blow the race open. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I don't know. Do I want to talk about policies? I want. I do want to talk about policies. So like, okay, Kamala. What I don't like about her policies are that she seems to be in favor of this like thing where you like you pack the Supreme Court, you add justice to the Supreme Court, so then you can um, take away the filibuster, so then you can add states to the United States. All these things basically just make it easier for like the majority to pass their agenda. So like if Democrats were in power, it would be easier for them to like get their stuff through. It would just take away like checks. And then adding states is like something that would make Democrats win more because the, um, Puerto Rico and DC are de- like Democrat. Um, they would vote for Democrats. Um, so I'm not in favor of that, which and that kind of scares me on the Democrat side. Of course, you guys know I don't love the Democrats' foreign policy. I don't love the conservatives' foreign policy either, but whatever. That's not really what I'm trying to talk about right now. Um, but the, the Republicans' policies that I don't like is the whole, like, the whole, like, MAGA side of the party where they want to, like, do these, like, things that just, like, they're not going to happen. And they want to, like, like, I know people, like, think, like, oh, Project 2025, it's, like, this big book and it doesn't mean anything. That's, like, the conservative, like, talking points. It's just, like, this big book, no one's ever read it. But it's, like, I just think there's, like, this whole side of the Republican Party. And 2025 or not, like, Project 2025 or not, they have, like, all these, like, they're just crazy people. And they have, like, crazy ideas. And, I like, they just come off as, like, almost as bad as the Democrats. Like, I think the leadership of the Republican Party, most of them don't, like, come off as, as bad as the Democrats. But there's, like, a huge section that are, like, Marjorie Taylor Greens that just, like, I can't listen to them speak. And you guys know I, I hate listening to the Democrats speak also. So, like, I don't know. I, I hate listening to politicians speak. Like, I, I so you, I don't, you guys might have seen this, but, like, Theo Vaughn did an interview with Donald Trump. And, like, I don't listen to Theo Vaughn, but, like, it's, like, interesting because, like, a comedian sort of guy and, like, Donald Trump. So, I, like, tried to listen to it. I just, like, couldn't listen to it. It was just, like, oh, like, I don't want to hear this. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just, I, I guess, like, I just don't like listening to either side, like, talk and speak um about anything i just think it's like like why i could be doing better things and you are annoying me i you sound pretentious um but that's that's the politics stuff um i think we're basically done with that that was probably went a little longer than i should it should have gone but you guys know i could talk about shit all day long anyways oh school started is everyone excited school started for most of the country by now most of the United States. I don't know about other countries. Y'all, school starts probably like September. I don't know. I know that's whatever. Um, but school starts in the United States. And real quick, one thing I want to talk about: first day of school. You guys know what I'm talking about when you walk into school. It's like, oh my god, I have the entire year ahead of me, and I'm a junior, so I'm like getting like senior rate at this point. Like I, I just don't want to be in school that much. Um. But you got to do it for two more years, and then maybe four years of college, and then maybe, you know, another, like, three years of grad school or whatever, whatever, you know. <laughs> we do this to survive and make money, so it's important, you know. Um, but, yeah, first day of school. I call it the first day of school depression because it just hits you all at once. Got a whole whole year ahead of me, whole nine months. But then you get there on the second day, and it's like, all right, I can, this is fine. <laughs> it's like I was overreacting. School isn't that bad. I can do this for nine months. Like, it's really not that bad. You get into routine, and then the days just sort of repeat, and you lose track of time, and then it's, you know, then it's August, or not August, then it's June. And it's like, all right, cool, we're done. That's really how school feels at this point. I've, I've got, I've done like 10 grades. I've gotten into the routine, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's school starting. Comment what you think about school starting. Detroit Lions, it's the next topic I wanted to talk about. This is the part where everyone clicks off because they're like, what the fuck, why is it talking about Detroit Lions? But maybe this is going to be a Detroit Lions podcast, you know? Once the season starts, maybe that's all I'll talk about. Who knows? Who cares, right? You know? Um, but, you know, big game tomorrow night as I'm recording this Saturday. Um, sa- Sunday night football. Guys, I remember a time where the Detroit Lions had one primetime game the whole season, and that was against the Packers. Usually, like... Whatever game was earlier in the season, um, 
now all our games are on prime time. Like most of them, the vast majority of them are on prime time. So it's pretty awesome. Lions are treated respectfully now. Um, God, I've been on like a kick of like old Lions like games, like just watching like like two thousand like thirteen to like two thousand eighteen Lions games. I guess it's not old for a lot of people, but like for me, that's like when I was like started as a Lions fan. Like I started watching probably in like twenty thirteen. I was like five years old, and then twenty eighteen is like when we stopped being good, or, like stopped like having any chance at making the playoffs. Then like twenty nineteen to like twenty twenty two maybe was when we really sucked, and then twenty twenty three. Like the 2022 season and then 2023 season, we were pretty good. But, um, yeah, I've been on like a kick of these old Lions games. It's just like those teams were really cool. Like, we had like Theo Riddick and um, <laughs> Brandon Pettigrew and of course Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson. Like, I've been, I went to so many of those games from like 2013 to 2018. So, those are some good, good Lions years. We weren't that good, but like, we just had like, I feel like every year it was like we could, we had a chance. So, like, every game really mattered. There's something about watching a t- bad football team, or, like, at least, like, a mediocre football team, where, like, in some senses, it's more exciting than watching, like, the Lions now, because back then, it's, like, you lost a game, and it was, like, God, that sucked. But, like, you want to have those, like, range of experiences. You want, like, the highs of, like, the really highs. And then, like, experiencing the lows is also sometimes nice. I mean, last season, Lions was different, because when you have a good team, you don't want to lose. But when you have, like, a 9-7 and team... Losing is, like, part of the fun, I think. Now losing is not part of the fun. We do not want to lose any games this season. But, let's see. Oh, okay. So, I was at a Green Day concert a few nights ago in Detroit. Awesome. Green Day. Awesome. Of course. Guys, if you want to know the level of hype in Detroit for these Lions, there were... Okay, a Green Day concert. And picture you're at a Green Day concert, okay? It's just, like, you know, people with, like, piercings and dyed black hair, just a bunch of emo kids, right, at these concerts, they don't watch football, they don't know, you know, they don't care about football, whatever, there were Jared Goff chants at this Green Day concert, like, many Jared Goff chants, like, I heard them constantly, like, not, like, while, during the show, but if there was ever, like, if, like, if there was ever, like, a pause in the show, or, like, before and after the show, or, like, in between, um, you know, there were other artists, like Smashing Pumpkins, were also there, so, like, in between Smashing Pumpkins and Green Day, there were Jared Goff chants. If you don't know who he is, he's the quarterback of the Lions. So, it was pretty pretty awesome. That's the level of hype in Detroit. Um, my dad is going to be at the game tomorrow night. So, that should be fun for him. I'm not going. Boo. But, my dad's going, so. I mean, being at these games, I don't know if you guys understand, I was at the only away playoff game last season, the one that we lost. But the home playoff games, I was in there. I had friends that were there. And from what I've heard, it was just cr- like the craziest place you could possibly be ever. Um, but I'm sure it's awesome. I'm sure. It's going to be awesome. The lines are going to win, guys. Trust me. Wait, score prediction real quick. Against the Rams in Detroit, Sunday night. 36 Lions 36. Rams 31. That's a good score prediction. All right. 36 31. I'm confident in that. Anyways, I feel like that's all I got for today. It's a little, little bit of a short show. See you guys next time.